this is the highlight of our field to have the cancer stem cell meeting here in Heidelberg. We do this every two years and we store up all our best data so we can present it to this august crowd because they tend to have very good, insightful questions. It's fascinating and very enriching, filled with very inspiring uh, speakers, I must say. What we discovered is that uh, the metastatic initiating cells in many different types of tumors uh, rely on fatty acids uh, for their metastatic potential. And uh, in fact, we can now recognize them on the basis of the expression of this uh, f a factor, which is called CD36, which is the entry of fatty acids into, into the cell. We've been able to analyze many different tumors. And what we see is that the higher the levels of CD36, the worse the prognosis of the patients, especially regarding with the uh, metastatic spreading. So the more CD36 a tumor has, the much higher is the propensity of that tumor uh, to develop dif different metastases. Fortunately, it's not all fatty acids. Uh, we know that uh, one of the major culprits here is palmitic acid, uh, which is capable of boosting the, the activity of CD36. And of course, this is a worrying thing because of the amount of palm oil that we are consuming in supermarket food you know, in industrialized countries. Every single time, there's always a new and exciting research going on in the area of cancer and the areas of stem cells. Stem cells express a DNA methyltransferase and when this is ablated or knocked out or inhibited then this essentially allows the stem cells to grow forever so they're essentially Im immortal by blocking this DNA methyltransferase. When cells lose DNMT3A, they slowly erode their DNA methylation, particularly around regions of the genome that are important for self renewal or immortality of the stem cells. So this loss of DNA methylation really drives their immortality. The, the loss of DNMT3A has medical significance in two ways. First of all, in many individuals as they age, they lose one copy of DNMT3A and this makes the stem cells expand. And the second one is that in many of these individuals, they can have a second mutation and that second hit drives oncogenesis or cancer. So DNMT3A mutations provide a fertile ground for second hits that drive cancer. It's one of the premier meeting on cancer stem cells. A pleasure to be back here. This is my what third or fourth time attending this meeting. So CHIP means clonal hematopoiesis of indeterminate potential. And this is a syndrome where there are somatic mutations in hematopoietic stem cells that lead to a clonal expansion. And those cells have an increased likelihood of progressing to hematologic malignancies. Yes, when we looked at very large cohorts of individuals who have CHIP or don't have CHIP, we found that CHIP is associated with increased overall mortality as well as an increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So these mutant blood cells have mutations in epigenetic regulators or other genes and they lead to abnormal function of those blood cells including abnormal function of macrophages and neutrophils and platelets which are the cells that are involved in the development of atherosclerosis and cardiovascular disease. So CHIP is an unexpected common route for both hematologic malignancies and cardiovascular disease. It's great to see the latest news, what's going on in stem cells and, and cancer, because it's really a fascinating topic uh, that will help us maybe hopefully to treat patients in the future in a better way. So leukemia stem cells are the ones that induce the disease, but also in relapse, these ones are the cells that are responsible. 
So molecularly, the leukemic stem cells have specific patterns in the chromatin, but they also differ on the RNA levels, especially small nu nuclear RNAs, so the snow RNAs differ. So we found that AML stem cells are specifically enriched for a group of RNA, which is called small nucleolar RNA. And these snow RNAs are specifically enriched in leukemic stem cells, and we believe that these ones drive the disease. One important aim of us is to target these snow RNAs and to shut them down and by this revert the leukemic stem cells into normal cells and by this improve the cure rate in patients. Well, one of the amazing parts about this meeting is the interaction between the clinical uh, investigators and people who are basic scientists. And it's quite amazing to see how basic science can ultimately translate into the clinics. It's been really a great meeting. Resistance to cancer therapy is a major clinical problem. We have looked at that in pancreatic cancer and have identified uh, new resistance mechanisms which is mediated by a protein called CYP3A5. CYP3A5 is typically expressed in the liver but it's hijacked to be highly expressed in pancreatic cells and it actually inactivates uh, certain chemotherapy drugs very effectively. Yes, indeed, what we could demonstrate is that if we block or inhibit a CYP3A5 expression in the tumor cells, this leads to a sensitization of the tumor cells to the chemotherapy treatment. And now we move on to test actually this result in uh, patients. And uh, we are initiating a phase two clinical trial together with our colleagues at the NCT, uh, where we enroll uh, advanced pancreatic cancer patients uh, they are treated initially with the standard chemotherapy. If they relapse and overexpress CYP3A5, then we provide these patients uh, with a double treatment, chemotherapy plus an inhibitor of CYP3A5. And with this, we hope that we can get tumor control or in best cases, even tumor regression.